In Mark IV model form, the Toyota Yaris has been further Europeanized, with sharper styling, a better quality interior, and improved media connectivity. Most important though are the significant changes made to its segment leading hybrid engine, giving the car better fuel economy, lower emissions and a greatly enhanced capability to operate on electric power alone at higher speeds and over longer distances. What was already a class act has just become genuinely hard to overlook. The Yaris has always been a super mini that works well in the real world and this fourth generation car is no exception. It's long lacked a bit of flair though, but this time around things look as if they could be a bit different. Time to find out just how different. The Yaris has been around since 1999 when the original XP10 series design was launched, gaining the car of the year title in the year 2000. More than 9 million has been sold since over three generations. The Mark II XP90 series car introduced in 2005 and the third generation XP130 series model launched in 2011 and then updated into XP150 series guys in 2014 before being further improved in 2017. The Yaris name taken from the legendary Carites or Graces, the three sisters that sprung from an illicit relationship between the gods Eurydome and Zeus, isn't the only one this little Toyota is sold under. In different markets, it's also known as the Platz, the Vitz, the Belter, the Echo and the Vios. In some countries, it's called a Diatsu Shirad, and in the US, they know it as either a Mazda 2 or a Scion. Nameplates aside though, what this Yaris has primarily been known for over the last decade is its lead in the democratization of electrification in small cars. Put simply, think of a small hybrid hatch and you tend to think of the Yaris. Which is why Toyota took a deep breath this time around and decided that this Mark IV XP210 series model launched in the spring of 2020 should for the first time be hybrid only. Self-charging full hybrid that is. Toyota doesn't believe in compromise mild hybrid powertrains like the ones that Ford, Kia and Hyundai now use in their super minis. And full on plug-in hybrid tech would make a car of this class uh, rather too expensive. Mind you, the full hybrid tech that is employed here does make this Yaris pretty pricey too. So it'll no longer feature in your deliberations if you're looking at the budget end of the market. But should it feature in your deliberations at all? After all, the small hatch sector is stuffed with great alternatives and the self-charging full hybrid super mini concept is no longer unique to Toyota. Uh, Honda's Jazz and a version of Renault Clio can now also offer the same kind of powertrain. Toyota there has vastly more experience in engine electrification than rivals like that. Uh, the company has been making hybrids since 1997 and this Mark IV Yaris uses a fourth generation petrol electric system bolted to an all new Toyota new generation architecture GAB chassis that's borrowed from the Corolla, a platform which is lighter than before. And that's another reason why there's class leading efficiency here. Toyota also makes bold claims about drivability improvements too, which is good news for potential fans of the top GR Yaris hot hatch variant. And it reckons it's produced a piece of cabin design that you'll really like. The exterior looks is certainly a good deal more eye-catching and it all sounds quite promising, doesn't it? It might all boil down to a package that offers the market's most sensible, maybe even the most satisfying real world super mini choice, but does it? Let's find out. No more boring cars. That was the mantra from Toyota boss Akio Toyoda, which has underpinned development of the brand's entire modern era range. With this Mark IV Yaris hybrid though, uh, that fresh approach met its toughest challenge yet. In its previous form, uh, this was after all the definitive boring car, especially in terms of its drive dynamics. What it was designed to do, it did brilliantly, just not in a very engaging way. 
but Susanna wouldn't like that. Now we should explain, Susanna is a mythical Yaris customer created by Toyota's marketing department who apparently lives in suburban Paris. Now the idea of a small hybrid fits with her trendy values, but she wants something with a bit more fizz. Now something, uh, let's be honest, that the Yaris has never previously offered, but this fourth generation version might. Completely reworked suspension and a brand new GAB version of the company's modern era TNGA platform has made it stiffer and more agile. A bit of weight loss helps too, aided by the engineering switch from four to three cylinders for the 1.5 litre self-charging full hybrid petrol electric engine beneath the more sculpted bonnet. And that's the only mainstream power plant now offered for this car for our market. As before, this features two electric motors, one in the drive line to power the front wheels and another smaller one to start the engine and to charge both the drive and the ancillary batteries. Uh, beyond that though, uh, most of the engineering here has evolved quite a lot. The hybrid system's main drive battery, for example, is now smaller, lighter and much more sophisticated. It's a lithium ion unit which is able to charge or discharge faster and that means uh, that in urban driving it can now spend up to 80% of the time powering the car. Uh, but then the Yaris Hybrid was always really good in town. Uh, this one enjoys life beyond the city limits too though. The combined efforts of the engine and the primary electric motor developed 15% more power than the previous model did and mid-range overtakes no longer require a calendar to plan ahead. Best of all though, Toyota has finally produced a CVT belt driven auto gearbox which gets close to conquering the rubber band effect that usually afflicts that kind of transmission. Now previously if you plonk your foot down on the uh, accelerator, the revs rose, the engine flared, your eardrums rattled but not very much was achieved in terms of swifter forward motion. Uh, it wouldn't be quite correct to say that that issue has been entirely eradicated by this Mark IV model's reworked eCVT Auto, but it's been vastly improved. Um, aided, we suspect, primarily by the new battery with a 50% power hike and the fact that it's now chipping in to fill drivability gaps far more frequently. It zips you away from rest far more quickly than was the case with the old model too, just like an EV. Toyota doesn't really like full EVs, although clearly it's going to have to build some. Uh, the Lexus division of Toyota already has, and it rather frowns on the mild hybrid tech that Ford, Hyundai and Kia have recently brought to the Super Mini Segment 2, uh, engines which only skate around the surface of electrification and don't allow independent battery-powered motion. Uh, as I've already mentioned, this car's full hybrid setup, rather pleasingly, uh, reverts to that for what seems like most of the time on suburban journeys, uh, which makes it different from the old model uh, in which the petrol engine still usually felt like it was the primary power source. Of course, uh, when you're pressing on around secondary roads or on the highway, uh, the three-cylinder 1490cc power plant will still be your primary means of propulsion. It develops 114 brake horsepower and it powers the car to 62 miles an hour in 9.7 seconds en route to an academic maximum of 109 mph. As we suggested earlier, it's in countrified and cruising conditions that the previous model felt a little out of its depth. Uh, this one feels far more engaging in the way that it, uh, it corners and steers, and that's thanks not only to the stiffer body shell and the reworked suspension that we referenced earlier, uh, the rear torsion beam is now a massive 80% stiffer, but also to a center of gravity that's now 12 millimeters lower than before. Uh, the improved steering uh, doesn't have anything like the satisfying sharpness of uh, say a Ford Fiesta but you can at least now properly feel what the wheels are doing through it and the reduction in body roll through the turns makes you more minded to try. If the engineers could have achieved all that without sacrificing something a typical Yaris hybrid owner will value rather more, uh, that's an absorbent quality of low speed ride, then all of this would have been fine. But that isn't what's been served up here. It isn't on the larger 17 inch wheels fitted to the plusher dynamic and Excel models anyway. Uh, that latter variant incidentally is what we're trying here today. 
These get lower profile tyres and suspension changes, delivering a firmer feel that works great through the turns on those country roads, but unsettles this car rather more than we'd like over the urban tarmac tears and the speed humps that you're going to be encountering rather more frequently. Uh, Toyota points out that the majority of Yaris sales will be of the lesser variants, which are fitted with smaller 16-inch rims, and they've been set up to ride with a little more compliancy. And with that in mind, you might want to insist that your dealer allows you to try a lower spec model before you make a decision on trim. With that issue sorted, there's plenty to like. As ever in a Yaris hybrid, refinement is superb, and that makes longer trips more palatable. And those are aided by the standardization of intelligent adaptive cruise control. Now that can automatically maintain your distance to the car in front on the highway. On that kind of road, uh, the previous model would always have run entirely on petrol power. In theory, although not actually in our experience in practice, it might not now, uh, given the way that this Mark IV model's denser battery cells make possible uh, an absolutely massive increase in all electric top speed from 25 to 80 miles an hour. At lower speeds, uh, when, as we've been saying, the battery certainly will be your primary power source, all you really hear is a bit of muted whining under acceleration from the electrical hardware. That is exacerbated a little by the enhancement in regenerative braking that you get when you collect the uh, ECVT auto gear selector into its alternative B setting. Talking of settings, there are three provided driving modes. Now, you won't be bothering very much with the electric-only EV option because due to the tiny 0.76 kilowatt hour size of the lithium-ion battery, it's only good for around four miles, although that is four times further than the previous generation model could go in the same mode. Most of the time, you'll be content to leave the car in eco, despite the fact that throttle response and climate control performance will be a touch restricted in that mode. Uh, for out of town use, there is the option of selecting power if you want to buffet your fuel figures a bit, uh, but you want to motivate a little more petrol engine involvement to get where you're going a bit faster. But going faster isn't really what driving a Yaris is all about unless the version in question happens to be the three-door model in the range, the uber-powerful flagship hot hatch GR Yaris variant. Now this shopping rocket derivative is actually rather significant. It's the first true performance model developed entirely in-house by Toyota in more than 20 years. It gets its own 257 brake horsepower, 1.6 litre, three-cylinder turbo engine and six-speed IMT manual gearbox made to the compact all-wheel drive R 4x4 system uh, which also features as an option on the SUV version of this Toyota Super Mini, the Yaris Cross. A GR Yaris powers to 62 in just 5.5 seconds. It gets a more sophisticated double wishbone rear suspension setup and it offers bigger brakes along with three preset torque distribution settings, uh, normal, sport and track. That GR model is a car we can't wait to try, but a typical Yaris hybrid owner would probably hate it. It is, after all, so utterly opposite to the kind of small hatch that this little Toyota tries to be in this, its mainstream form. Uh, quiet, comfortable, easy to drive, and blessed with a tight 5.5 meter turning circle and turn on a sixpence maneuverability. All of those things make volume versions of this Toyota appealing to the kinds of people who never really go very far in the Super Mini that they've chosen, but who want comfort and ease of use for the shorter trips that they do make. What's different now, though, is that the Yaris can reach out beyond those folk to those who might demand a little more from their small car. Now, this fourth generation version of this model now delivers that, which makes it a big step forward. And depending on your perspective, it might even make it the most sensible small car that you could choose. With this fourth generation XP210 series Yaris, Toyota has returned to the so-called big small concept which inspired the original Mark I model. You get that from a glance at this car and at its spec sheet. The wheelbase is longer, but overall length, unusually for a new Super Mini, is actually shorter, uh, five mils less than the last Mark III version. Visually, the emphasis has been on delivering this with a fresh sense of energy and dynamism. Chief engineer Yasunori Suzawa wanted the styling to capture the stance of an athlete on the starting blocks. 
You can see this in the aggressively shaped rear wings which arch up into the C-pillars and in the car's more purposeful wider, lower and more compact proportions which aim to deliver the impression of condensed power. Muscular front and rear wings, sculpted door panels and much shorter front and rear overhangs also help here, as do strong side character lines which project a sense of forward motion. Plus, the designers have added to the dynamic look by pulling the base of the A-pillar rearwards and by increasing the bonnet length. Wheel sizes are 16 inches, or as in this case, 17 inches in diameter, according to model grade. Uh, the front end continues with that more energetic theme, the larger grille topped by this prominent central emblem and flanked by headlights that extend back towards the front wheels. With most variants, uh, these beams are of the full LED kind and they include turn indicators that alternate with the daytime running lights, a wide lower air intake and the boomerang shaped cutouts for the front fog lights complete the greater sense of overtaking presence. At the rear, you might better appreciate this Mark IV model's 40mm reduction in height and this black mid-level trim panel and a prominent diffuser-style section in the sculpted bumper together accentuate the 50mm increase in overall width, which along with the 57mm extension of the track width adds to the lower, wider and more purposeful stance. All this is made possible by the fresh GAB version of the TNGA platform that's essentially the same as the one used in the larger Corolla hatch. The structure is also allowed for the improvement in stiffness you might expect from a modern super mini design. Here it's 37% and a platform weight reduction, in this case 20 kilos, which is less usual. All good, but what you'll probably care about more is the stuff you can actually see. Uh, the cabin quality of the previous Yaris couldn't compete with the kind of Volkswagen Group style interiors which super mini customers are now increasingly taking for granted in this segment. Are things better here? Well, a big step forward has certainly been taken. You still wouldn't think you were sat in a VW Polo, but everything does feel as if it's been given a bit more love, that the designers have thought a bit about what they'd actually like to live with rather than what works best on a CAD CAM screen. The fascia style is more modern, the trim materials are of higher quality, the central infotainment screen now no longer has a turn of the century look, and providing you avoid base trim, there's even a set of circular digital dials in the instrument cluster. Everything seems to be ideally where you'd want it. Uh, you grip a sportier, more tactile three-spoke wheel, and the French Pas de Calais factory appears to have screwed things together with the kind of quality that now really does justify the rave reviews that Yaris's tend to get from long-term customer satisfaction surveys. Function as well as form has been prioritised here too. The design focused on an eyes on the road, hands on the wheel approach, which brings key things into your sight line, uh, minimises distraction and improves visibility. In pursuit of this, the instrument panel has been set lower. There's a wider front console, a lower hood for the instrument binnacle and the uh, A-pillars have been pulled further back. Plus, Toyota has tried to create more of a spacious feeling environment by moving these front seats slightly outwards with 60 millimeters rearwards. Uh, the reduction in roof height we mentioned earlier meant that they uh, had to be set lower too, hence the 21 millimeter hit point reduction for the driver, which also aims to deliver a sportier seating stance in front of this smaller wheel. We mentioned the central infotainment screen, a Toyota Touch 2 setup, which, as in this case, will be 8 inches in size, providing you avoid the base trimmed variant with its 7 inch monitor. Uh, there are straightforward audio, phone, info, and setup sections from the main menu, uh, with graphics that, although they're clearer and sharper than they were before, still don't look particularly sophisticated. But it is an improvement, and you can at last have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring on a small Toyota, uh, this being a proper wireless setup, so there won't be um, your phone leads dangling everywhere when you use it. Top variants embellish this with an eight-speaker JBL Premium Audio System 2, which gives you these neat little A-pillar-mounted speakers. What you can't have is a really intuitive level of voice control from an infotainment setup of this kind 
or perhaps more surprisingly, the option of built-in navigation, despite the fact that there is a map button option on the right-hand frame, which doesn't actually do anything apart from uh, telling you that you can't have a map. Uh, we think quite a few Yaris folk will find that a bit annoying. Um, now, yes, the new smartphone mirroring means that navigation apps can be loaded onto this monitor, but those aren't much use if you're out of phone signal. As for the circular digital dials in the instrument cluster we mentioned earlier, while well, those give this Mark IV Yaris an agreeably sophisticated feel, uh, where they're fitted anyway, you don't get them with base icon trim. Uh, they are designed in what Toyota calls a binocular style, and they generally work pretty well, although they could be brighter. Uh, the left-hand dial shows gear selection and a power meter with charge, eco and power sections. The right gauge is a digital speedometer with fuel and temperature readouts. Now these two circular displays flank a small 4.2 inch central information colour monitor uh, whose rather cluttered screen has eco, safety, audio and energy monitor options activated by the left hand steering wheel button. Uh, you can bring key information better into your line of sight if you choose the extra cost head up display that we've been trying here. A big 10 inch color graphic projected onto the bottom of the windscreen. Now this is the first time that this kind of thing has been seen on a super mini. That's a big car type feature, a theme that as suggested earlier is continued by the way that cabin trimming here has much less of a budget style feel than it did before. Soft touch padding coats the top of the dashboard, uh, soft touch inserts feature in the door panels which have smart silver detailing and the diamond pattern seat trim in this top variant with its synthetic leather inserts feels like the kind of thing that you might find in a more premium DS product. Uh, good pedal alignment and lots of seat and wheel adjustability means it's easy to find an ideal driving position too. It isn't all perfect, of course. The uh, seats could be a bit more supportive. They'd certainly benefit from the option of lumbar support and ideally they'd have backrests that are adjusted by a wheel rather than in steps by a lever. Plus, those recited A pillars remain a bit on the thick side for optimum junction vision, but the width of this big windscreen helps at roundabouts and thanks to large side windows and a decently sized rear screen, all round visibility is better than the class average with a standard rear view camera too, uh, that's included just in case. Cabin storage isn't anything to write home about though. Uh, the door bins are narrow, but they can just about hold a small bottle of water. You could probably fit a set of gloves in the glove box, and there is a tray just above that, but you won't want to use it because uh, everything on it would just slide around everywhere. Uh, another cubby just above the climate controls is better because it has a non-slip mat. Uh, this big lower center stack cubby in front of the gear stick is probably where you'll want to stash your wallet, your purse, or your phone, uh, the latter connectable via a USB socket just above. Another small cubby is incorporated into this central armrest, uh, below which you'll find a couple of cup holders, although once you fold the armrest down, it'll probably hit the tops of any bottles that you place below. Uh, Toyota's forgotten ticket clips and the sun visors and an overhead sunglasses compartment. Time to take a seat in the back. Now with 50 millimeters of extra wheelbase length this time around, you'd hope for a few improvements here. Uh, where keyless entry has been fitted, these rear doors will now unlock with it and they open wide. But despite the provision of 20 millimeters more legroom from this Mark IV design, cabin space still feels merely average by class standards, possibly because the hybrid system battery is now under this bench rather than as before beneath the boot floor. That's why you can't have the sliding rear bench that was such a feature of the old pre-2012 Mark II Yaris model, and it's certainly why you can't have the pull-up seat bases that you get on the rival Honda Jazz Hybrid. Still, a couple of lanky folk could just about be accommodated, and at least the central transmission tunnel is uh, quite low, so if it were ever necessary to squeeze in three folk back here, you could conceivably do it. Plus, the curiously shaped side windows are quite tall, so kids shouldn't feel too claustrophobic, especially not in a variant fitted out with this optional panoramic glass roof, which really does give the cabin a much airier feel. 
As in any Super Mini, it'd be a bit of a squash with a couple of really big folk back here, of course, although not as much of a squash as it would be in the Japanese market version of this car, which is actually uh, quite a lot narrower, and that illustrates the production flexibility of the TNGA platform. Headroom, that's not great either, courtesy of that lower external roof line, although six footers will just about fit. Having said all of that though, if rear seat room were actually to be an issue, then a customer seeking a compact Toyota of this sort probably wouldn't be looking at this super mini body style in the first place, but at the more spacious Yaris Cross SUV version of this design. Uh, most buyers of course will be using this rear bench for children, in which case they'll be pleased to learn that the uh, rear seat belts feature force limiters and pretensioners, as well as the usual ice fix fastening points. Uh, you do get a seat back pocket on the left, although rather meanly not on the right, and there are coat hooks in the overhead grab handles. We'll finish with a look at boot space, bearing in mind the battery relocation we just mentioned. We were expecting a small improvement in size here, so it's a fraction disappointing to find the same 286 litre capacity as before. That is slightly less than you'll get from a Ford Fiesta, which does have one of the smaller boots in the Super Mini segment. Uh, to give you some perspective, a city car like Hyundai's i10 from the next segment down has a 251 litre boot, which is almost as big. You might think comparisons like these to be a little unfair. After all, hybrid packaging has to have some practical effect, yet competitors manage it better. A rival Honda Jazz hybrid offers 304 litres of space. Uh, with the Renault Clio hybrid, it's 366 litres. Still, at least this trunk space is square and usable, extending back 630 millimetres to the seat backs and offering 1,004 mils of width, enough for, say, a push chair to fit in quite easily. Uh, there is a bag hook, but Toyota has forgotten to fit tie down points and there's not much space uh, beneath the boot floor, although you will get a space saver spare wheel provided down there, provided you don't specify the panoramic glass roof. It is annoying that for our market, customers aren't offered the adjustable height boot floor, which is fitted in Yaris is sold in other countries, even though there are the trunk area ridges for it. That would have been useful for smoothing out the cargo floor ridge that you'll get here when you flatten this 60-40 split rear bench, which when folded, uh, frees up 947 litres. This, Toyota's chief executive, Akio Toyota, says it's his everyday go-to car. We don't want our customers to think of it as cheap, he says. We want drivers to think of it as cool and affordable. Well, that will depend on your definition of cool and affordable. In other European markets where conventional 1 and 1.5 litre petrol units are offered, this Yaris might conceivably qualify for that description, but it certainly doesn't here, where the sole powertrain availability of a self-charging hybrid engine means that asking figures don't even start until the £20,000 price point. And that amount only gets you the base icon trim level that few will want. From launch, it was necessary to think in terms of paying from around £21,000 for the next spec level up design and around £22,000 for something a bit plusher like dynamic trim or the top XL spec model we have here. If you're one of the ever increasing number of customers who prefer to use a PCP finance scheme, then you'll be more interested to learn that a typical design spec model after a £4,300 deposit will cost a reasonably affordable sounding £189 a month over four years. To give you some class perspective on that, a Ford Fiesta EcoBoost mild hybrid model would cost only around £10 a month less over the same period. All mainstream Yaris variants are fitted with exactly the same 1.5 litre VVTi, 116 horsepower full hybrid petrol engine mated to CVT auto transmission, and you have to have five doors, unless you opt for a version of this Super Mini which appeals to a completely different audience, the GR Yaris. Now this motorsport developed super hot hatch comes only in three door form and uses a three cylinder 1.6 litre conventional turbo petrol unit putting out a potent 257 horsepower, transmitting its torque to the tarmac via a compact four-wheel drive system.
Now we should additionally brief you on the fact that there's also an SUV Yaris body shape that shares all the same hybrid engineering as this conventional Yaris and it's called the Yaris Cross. Now this crossover variant comes with the option of Toyota's AWDI four-wheel drive system and it's 200 millimeters shorter than Toyota's other stylized compact SUV, the CHR. Here though, our focus is on the conventional super mini version of this Toyota, which is of crucial importance to its brand. It accounts for over 22% of its new car business and 7.6% of the entire European B segment market. Back in 2016, when we last tested a Yaris Hybrid, this was a £16,000 car, so it could conceivably appeal to super mini buyers on a mid-range budget. That would be a bit of a stretch now, though, even if you accept the fact that engine electrification does come with a higher price tag, you're going to be a touch resentful about having to find the sorts of figures that Toyota's asking here, unless, that is, you really compare apples with apples. After all, Ford will sell you a so-called hybrid five-door version of their Fiesta for around £18,500. And hybrid versions of the Kia Rio and the Hyundai i20 can be had for even less. But these are what the industry calls mild hybrid super minis, and that means that they don't have fully electrified engines, which at times can run solely on battery power. All mild hybrid tech gives you is a tiny extra battery under the front seat, which boosts acceleration a bit and runs the stop-start system. And it doesn't ultimately make a massive amount of difference to the running cost figures. Which is why a proper full hybrid super mini like this one will cost you more. Yes, more to the tune of what Toyota's asking here. Now there are only two full hybrid rivals to this Yaris in the Super Mini segment, the Honda Jazz and the Renault Clio hybrid. And it's these two small hatches that you should also be considering if this car here has taken your interest. Now, neither can be quite as efficient as the Yaris, but Honda has aggressively priced its base and mid-range Jazz models around £1,000 below their Yaris equivalents. A top Yaris and a top Jazz, though, would cost much the same. Uh, the Clio, that has a bigger boot than this Toyota, and it costs about the same too. But its hybrid engineering isn't quite as sophisticated. For reference, it might be worth briefing you on how much it would cost to trade up to the next level of super mini electrification. That's the one for full battery powered, zero emission BEV models like the Peugeot E208 and the Vauxhall Corsa E. For these, you'll generally be looking at paying in the 26 to 30,000 pound bracket, depending on the trim level you want. But then you'll be afflicted with the scourge of range anxiety as you drive with one eye on your rapidly depleting electric only mileage capability between charges. Now, a typical Yaris customer won't want that. Ultimately, most buyers for this car will be people who once would have chosen an upper spec, conventionally powered combustion engine super mini, but who are now minded to put the price premium that they would once have devoted to a higher level of uh, specification towards a greener dose of engine technology instead. Now, if that is you and you're ready to make the big switch to a hybrid, then as we said earlier, do make absolutely certain that you know what you're getting. And do bear in mind, um, if you're comparing against something which is more conventional, that an ordinary combustion engine super mini would only be uh, directly comparable to this Yaris uh, when it was fitted with an extra cost automatic gearbox. Auto transmission, as we mentioned earlier, is an integral part of the Yaris hybrid system. If, having considered all those options, you decide it is this Toyota that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous the brand has been with the standard specification. So let's take a look at that right now. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the range kicks off with Icon trim, which gets you 16-inch alloy wheels, auto high beam headlights and auto wipers, powered heated mirrors, LED tail lights, a space saver spare wheel, and an alarm immobilizer. On the inside, there's automatic air conditioning, a three-spoke leather multifunction steering wheel, and intelligent adaptive cruise control with an adjustable speed limiter. Media connectivity, uh, that is taken care of by an improved seven-inch 
Toyota Touch 2 multimedia center dash display, which incorporates a reversing camera, uh, which lets you connect in your smartphone wirelessly via Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and provides access to Bluetooth and a four speaker DAB stereo system. Plus you get a wide range of camera safety features, and we'll come onto those in a few minutes. Across the Yaris range, useful connected services can be accessed via the MyT Toyota smartphone app. Features include practical and useful information about Toyota and an eco driving app. MyT also logs driving data, so information about mileage, speed and acceleration can be retrieved at a later date. It can also provide reminders about when the car's service is due. Beyond Icon Spec, as we touched on earlier, there is quite a big price jump to the next step up in the range. Design trim, uh, the variant that Toyota expects 48% of customers to choose. Still, you do get quite a bit more kit in return, including a smarter look, courtesy of full LED headlights for LED front fog lamps, uh, brighter rear LED tail lamps, uh, rear privacy glass, and a more eye-catching machine-faced finish for the 16-inch alloy wheels. Plus inside, there's a higher standard of entertainment courtesy of a larger 8-inch version of the Toyota Touch 2 multimedia center dash display and a binocular style color instrument display screen with a digital speedo. Rear powered windows and LED turn indicators are also included at that level. For a few more of the real niceties though, you'll need to stretch to a dynamic spec variant, which the brand thinks uh, will attract 8% of Yaris buyers. Here you get luxuries like dual zone automatic air conditioning, an eight speaker JBL premium sound system, smart uh, keyless entry, front sport seats trimmed in part synthetic upholstery, piano black interior styling, and height adjustment for the front passenger seat. Bear in mind though that from this point in the range, you have to have larger 17 inch alloy wheels and they come non-negotiably with significantly firmer suspension, which a typical Yaris buyer may not like. Try first before you decide on your trim level is our advice. At first glance, the top trimmed XL variant we're testing here doesn't give you much more than you get with the dynamic spec variants, apart from auto retracting door mirrors and a few detail changes. At this level, piano black interior styling is swapped for satin chrome and there's gray rather than black upholstery fabric. Plus, rather curiously, despite this top version's higher price, you lose the lesser dynamic spec model's JBL eight speaker premium sound system unless you're prepared to pay extra for it. And there's the continuing potential issue of the firmer suspension that goes with those machine faced 17 inch alloy wheels. XL trim does though give you a lot more parking peace of mind. Front and rear parking sensors, they're fitted as standard at this level, uh, along with a clever intelligent clearance sonar feature that can detect the risk of a low speed collision during a parking maneuver, uh, say uh, something that you haven't seen like a low wall. Now because the intelligent clearance sonar is directly connected to the braking system, if uh, something like that is detected, the brakes will automatically be applied to prevent the incident. For completeness, we'll also brief you on the spec of the GR Yaris hot hatch model, which as we said earlier, appeals to a completely different audience from this ordinary variant. The GR Yaris comes with two trim levels, a standard one that uh, offers 18 inch alloy wheels shod with Dunlop Sport Max tires, plus dual exit exhaust pipes, a leather steering wheel, keyless entry, and active noise control. Or alternatively, there's the more track orientated circuit pack variant, which adds a pair of limited slip differentials, red brake calipers, tuned suspension, and stickier Michelin Pilot Sport tires. Both versions come with white paint as standard, but customers can choose red, black, or silver finishes as an option. Let's get back to the ordinary Yaris range we're here to focus on today though and talk about options you can add. We'll start with an important one you can't have. From launch, the larger 17-inch wheel and firmer suspension package of the plusher, dynamic and Excel variants couldn't be swapped out for the smaller 16-inch rim and softer damping package of the Icon and Design variants, which even if you don't care about ride quality, you might want to do to improve efficiency. Now that's a pity. We're also a bit astonished that the Japanese 
Japanese brand isn't offering the option of building in navigation to the central Toyota Touch 2 screen. And it's all very well to argue that the provision of Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto smartphone mirroring and the Google Maps or Waze apps that you can download through it uh, makes that unnecessary. But apps like those are only useful when you have a phone signal or you've downloaded maps. If you're out in the country, say, and you need to navigate somewhere remote, uh, you might end up a bit stuck. Right, having groused about that, let's get on to what you can have. There aren't too many options because Toyota wants you to simply upgrade to a higher trim level if you want a higher standard of kit. Much of what you can have relates to aesthetic embellishment. You might, for example, want the flare pack with its bright Tokyo red front and rear styling stickers, or perhaps one of the chrome or Tokyo fusion packs, which give you eye-catching trims for the front bumper, the rear tailgate, and possibly also the side sills. There is also a Tokyo fusion interior pack that gives you a center console and carpet mats uh, colored in Tokyo red. You'll almost certainly need to be paying your Toyota dealer uh, more for your choice of paint color. The only standard one is solid pure white. There's a range of metallic or pearlescent shades available. If you want the option of bitone paint in red or white with a contrast colored eclipse black roof, you'll need to have chosen mid-range dynamic trim. There is also a choice of 16 or 17 inch alloy wheel upgrades. Optional luxury touches include the panoramic glass roof that you can have as an option with Design and XL models. And on this top XL variant, there's the option of a tech pack that we've been trying here, which includes a head-up display, and that's a segment-first feature, plus an electrochromatic rear-view mirror and the added back-in benefit of the JBL 8-speaker premium sound system. Dynamic Spec Yaris customers will be offered a parking pack that includes auto folding mirrors and a blind spot monitor. Practical extras include an essential protection pack, which gives you a boot liner, mud flaps, and a rear bumper protection plate. Or you can get those features as part of a protection plus pack, which also includes rubber floor mats. Roof crossbars can be added, and with those, you can have a roof box or holders for skis, snowboards, or bikes. Plus, of course, you can specify a tow bar, and that can tug along up to 450 kilos. There's an optional dash cam too, and a range of Toyota approved child seats. Enough on options, what about the safety standards of this fourth generation Yaris? Well, Toyota says that this car has been engineered to be the world's safest small car, and there's something of a model line track record here. The second generation model was the first super mini in its class to achieve a top five-star ranking from Euro NCAP safety testing, and the Mark III version was also amongst the class leaders in that regard, thanks to its inclusion of Toyota's impressive package of safety sense camera measures. This Mark IV model's cause is helped from the outset by the significant 37% increase in body rigidity brought about by the installation of the new GAB platform, achieved through extra welding and bonding adhesives, additional reinforcements, and the creation of robust ring structures in the body to increase stiffness, all of which allows for better absorption of impact forces, helping to maintain the integrity of the cabin and the safety of the occupants in the event of a collision. Uh, should an impact like that take place, you'll be further aided by the Smart 4 Yaris model's inclusion of SRS center airbags, this being the first Toyota model to feature those. SRS center airbags deploy in the event of a side impact and they help prevent the driver and the front seat passenger from colliding with each other. Now we mentioned the Toyota Safety Sense package of advanced driver assistance systems. Well, that's been further improved here. It's fitted a standard rod across the range and it includes a range of really significant camera and radar driven features. The most important of which is the pre-collision system with pedestrian detection autonomous braking setup. 
Here, a front-mounted camera and a millimetre wave radar sensor both scan the road head at between 16 and the vehicle's 112 miles an hour top speed, searching for potential collision hazards either with people or animals, solid objects or other vehicles. If something you might be in danger of hitting is detected, then you'll be warned. If you don't respond or you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. As we just mentioned, the system can specifically specifically detect pedestrians and do so in both day and night time at speeds of up to 50 miles an hour. It can also specifically detect cyclists, although only in daylight. Now we've seen pre-collision system with pedestrian detection before on other Toyota models, but here it's been further embellished with two more features. There's emergency steering assist, which helps you if you've got to take sudden avoiding action. And for the first time in this segment, you'll also get intersection turn assistance, which helps avoid the common risk of colliding with another vehicle or pedestrian when you're making a turn at an intersection. Now, if the system detects an oncoming pedestrian uh, crossing the carriageway uh, that you're about to turn into, or if there is a risk of the vehicle moving across the path of oncoming traffic, an alert will be sounded, and if the driver fails to respond, automatic emergency braking will be applied. Now, this function operates at speeds between 6 and 15 miles an hour. Just how many accidents could be avoided if that feature was standard on all modern small cars? Other safety sense features include lane departure alert, that's now embellished with lane tracing assist and steering control so that the car will not only warn you if you accidentally cross the lane delineating lines, but it'll also apply subtle steering assistance to ease you back to where you ought to be. Uh, the system can also now recognize road markings like curbs, grass or earth, so that steering assistance is available more of the time, both on straight roads and through the bends. Uh, if the road markings are obscured or can't be detected, then the system will follow the path of the vehicle ahead while keeping within the traffic lane. Road sign assist is also standard, picturing road signs as you pass them and displaying them on the dash. And as I mentioned earlier, the standard spec includes automatic high beam headlights and intelligent adaptive cruise control, which can automatically maintain your distance to the car in front on the highway. With dynamic spec, there's also the option of two further camera safety features. Rear cross traffic alert can detect approaching vehicles and warn you as you reverse out of a bay, while the blind spot monitor works on the move to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. This Yaris also gets plenty of more conventional safety kits too. Twin front side and curtain airbags, for example. Although, unlike in other Toyotas, there's no further airbag for the driver's knees. If any of those bags go off in an accident, there's an e-call system which will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location. Uh, as expected, you get active headrests to guard against whiplash and ice fixed charge seat mounts on the two outer rear seats. On top of that, there's hill start assist control to prevent the car from rolling backwards as you pull away on steep inclines, plus VSC stability control and the usual ABS braking and traction control systems. Every model in the range also comes with a tyre pressure warning feature too. While other brands are just about getting around to hybrid electrification, Toyota is already on the fourth generation of its petroelectric power plant. The engineering here has been completely overhauled over the previous generation Yaris Hybrid. Uh, we'll get to the detail on that in just a moment. And the result is that overall efficiency has improved by 22%, despite the fact that power output has risen by 16%. As for the WLTP rated figures, well, they're class leading with a combined cycle fuel economy figure of 68.9 MPG for a base Icon variant with 16-inch uh, wheels. The same derivative manages 92 grams per kilometer of CO2, which Toyota claims is a significant 26 grams per kilometer improvement over the previous generation model. For a plusher Yaris like the one we're trying here with larger 17-inch wheels, the figures are 65.7 MPG and 98 
8 grams per kilometer. You'll need some class perspective on those readings. Uh, a Honda Jazz Hybrid manages 62.8 mpg and 102 grams per kilometer. Uh, figures that a Renault Clio Hybrid improves to 64.2 and 98 grams per kilometer. If you want to compare against a mild hybrid model, well, a Ford Fiesta EcoBoost Hybrid manages 58.9 mpg and 109 grams per kilometer. So, how has Toyota done it? Well, like the previous generation Toyota hybrid unit, this one benefits from exceptionally high levels of thermal efficiency, 40% to be specific, and that ensures that more of the energy potential of every drop of fuel is captured. Uh, this Polish-built unit still uses the Atkinson cycle, which keeps the intake valves open for longer, uh, delaying the compression stroke, but it now has just three cylinders rather than the previous four, uh, a major reason, in fact, for the useful curb weight reduction, which is enjoyed by this fourth generation model. An entry level variant tips the scales now at just 1,085 kilos, down from uh, 1,200 kilos in the previous generation design. Uh, that's a significant improvement and it makes it significantly lighter than its Honda and Renault rivals. Those two brands will be poring over the latest Synergy Drive power plant to understand the changes made, and they include a redesigned power control unit and a more compact and lightweight hybrid transaxle, which now places the hybrid system's two electric motors on multiple shafts rather than uh, one behind the other, and that reduces the transaxle's width by 37 millimeters. Perhaps most important, though, is the change made to the 0.76 kilowatt hour battery pack that's now of the lithium iron kind rather than the old fashioned nickel metal hydride sort. Its voltage is up from 144 to 177.8 volts and its current flow is hugely improved by 100% into the battery and by 50% out of it. Because this battery is now smaller, it can be located beneath the rear seat rather than under the boot floor. And because of that relocation, it can remain cooler and that negates the need for the previous unit's standalone liquid cooling system. Now, combining this with those other improvements uh, explains the reason why this power pack is now a significant 27% or 12 kilos lighter than before. Small wonder then that the overall efficiency figures remain class leading. Those of a frugal frame of mind will want to try to get as close as possible to replicating the official figures using the Instrument Binnacle's left-hand power meter display and as often as possible staying in the blue charge and green eco zones. Uh, Toyota rather ambitiously reckons that its self-charging hybrid engines are capable of covering up to 80% of a typical daily commuting drive under electric power alone. With the previous generation model, it claimed up to 50%. As usual, on a Toyota Hybrid, there is an available EV button which is supposed to fix the car in electrified motion. Uh, that can apparently take place at up to 80 miles an hour. In reality though, you'll find that the batteries are hardly ever charged up enough for you to be able to use that feature. And even when you can, it will only last for around four miles, although that is around four times further than the previous generation model. To be fair, full hybrid engines, unlike plug-in hybrids, aren't really designed to run for extended periods under full electrification, the idea instead being that the battery will cut in and out as needed during town driving. As a result, during much of your urban motoring in a Yaris hybrid, uh, say when you're inching along in traffic, when the engine's seamlessly disabled, uh, the EV mode is activated and you've got battery power in motion, you won't be emitting any emissions at all. At higher speeds, uh, you'll need to bear in mind that the quoted fuel figures are even more heavily dependent than usual on the driver, assuming a significant degree of restraint. Uh, the provided eco driving section of the My Toyota smartphone app that might help here. To get anywhere near even the 50 miles per gallon mark in day-to-day -day motoring with this Toyota, you'll need to keep the car locked into the driving mode system's eco mode. Now that moderates throttle response and engine power output while tweaking the climate control. And ideally you'll be selecting the CVT gearbox's extra provided B setting and that increases the level of regenerative braking and therefore the level of energy harvesting as you drive. 
Uh, during your journeys, uh, you might like to monitor all the hybrid system's cleverness on the energy display, uh, which is right in your eye line as a selectable option on the Instrument Binnacle's 4.2 inch central screen there. Uh, now this graphic appears in rather more detailed form in the info part of the center stack Toyota Touch 2 monitor. And that shows, uh, shows a rather impressive clarity what at any time has been powered by what. That bigger screen's same info segment has a graphical trip information section too. And that shows the amount of energy that's been recently regenerated. Plus, there's also a history screen option, and that allows you to gauge uh, your ongoing success in fuel economy. There's also an eco section of the little screen in the instrument binnacle, and that can give you average fuel consumption and driving range. All of the technology on offer might make you worry about the Yaris hybrid model's uh, reliability, but the Prius-derived engineering in use here scores very highly in almost every customer satisfaction survey going, and all models are covered by a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Now, that's not quite a match for Kia's seven-year deal, uh, although it is a notable improvement on the limiting three-year, 60,000-mile packages that you get from brands like Ford, Vauxhall, and Volkswagen. Unlike earlier Toyota hybrid models, there's no extended warranty for the hybrid components. Uh, early Priuses were covered for up to eight years. However, after the five-year warranty expires, you can renew that at extra cost for a further year or 10,000 miles. And you can do that every 12 months up to the 15th anniversary of this car's initial registration, uh, provided that a hybrid electric service is regularly carried out at a main dealer Toyota hybrid electric specialist. As standard, Yaris buyers get five years of pan-European breakdown assistance, uh, a three-year paint warranty, and 12 years of anti-perforation cover. As for looking after your car, well, routine maintenance is needed every 10,000 miles or 12 months, depending on which comes around first. Uh, that may be a little frustrating if you're a higher mileage driver. Uh, that MyT Toyota smartphone app, that can provide reminders about when the car's services are due. Hybrid models are subject to extra service checks, but Toyota doesn't charge any more for doing that. Uh, there is a dedicated My Toyota website, which allows you to book a service online, and Toyota has a fixed price servicing plan, so you'll always know in advance exactly how much any work will cost before you commit to checking into a dealer. You could also take advantage of the optional prepaid service plan, which the dealer will offer you at point of purchase. This enables Yaris owners to cover the cost of routine maintenance with monthly or one-off payments in advance. However you go about paying for maintenance on a Yaris hybrid, it shouldn't cost you very much. After all, there's no starter motor or alternator to go wrong, uh, no drive belts to break, there's a maintenance-free timing chain, uh, there's no particulate filter to get clogged up with diesel fumes, and of course, thanks to the CVT Auto gearbox, there's no clutch either. The hybrid setup has a good record for minimizing tire wear, and the battery will last the life of the car. Plus, the regenerative braking setup helps to extend the life of the brake pads. Over 60,000 miles of driving, the front pads should only need replacing once, while the rear pads and all the discs will probably last the full distance. What about predicted uh, residual values? Well, industry experts reckon that after three years and 36,000 miles, this car should still be worth 51.4% of its original value, hence the relatively affordable PCP finance terms we mentioned earlier. The low CO2 readings we mentioned earlier too mean a move into a more affordable VED band, £125 for year one, that's a £40 saving. And this car's frugal emissions will be particularly good news for business motorists, with the benefit in kind rating for company car tax as a result falling to 21 or 22 percent according to model grade. That's three percentage points lower across the range compared to the previous generation model. And finally, let's tell you about insurance. Uh, the base Icon variant, that's rated a group 13E. All the other trim grades, it's group 14E. At a time of radical change in the motor industry, this fourth generation Yaris had to deliver. 
and by and large, it has. Like Honda, Toyota has switched its standard Super Mini almost exclusively into full hybrid power. Unlike Honda though, it's done so at the same time as being able to produce a reasonably engaging standard of drive dynamics. And that's something that we really never thought we'd find ourselves saying about a Yaris hybrid. Arguably, in fact, engineers have gone a little too far in this regard, hence our comments earlier about the slightly unsettled ride that you'll get from a plusher variant like this one fitted with the larger 17-inch size of wheel. Toyota should think about giving customers more options here. Assuming that you can afford the higher asking prices that unfortunately must accompany more advanced electrified technology, there's not much else to grouse about here. After decades of dull design for its conventional cars, the penny has finally dropped at Toyota that more striking looks mean healthier sales figures. And as a result, this fourth generation Yaris model is the first that you could conceivably call fashionable or trendy. Plus, the redesigned cabin is a vast improvement too. As before, most will still choose this hybrid Super Mini for its superb refinement, its regularly achievable 50 to 60 miles per gallon economy, and its tax-friendly sub 100 grams per kilometer CO2 readings. The difference now, though, is that those aren't the only reasons why you might want one. As an alternative to a baby battery-powered full electric small hatch, it may not be quite as good for the planet, but for most people, most of the time, it's by far the better all-round choice. And the bottom line, well, ask yourself what you really need a Super Mini for, and then see if this Yaris doesn't tick every single box. Toyota, it seems, knows how to write a bestseller.